Joining me now is uh, King 5 political uh, expert Marco Lowe, also a professor at Seattle University. Marco, first of all, just give us the significance of her passing. What does it mean for the high court? I mean, it, it's incredibly sad. She's been there since 1993. So one of the, you know, the longest serving members currently and was a, it was a very powerful voice on the court and somebody that, that was the head of the liberal wing for the last few years. So it, it's, a, it's a huge loss uh, you know, for, the, for the country and all, at all. Marco, let's talk about the balance of power because President Trump has nominated two members of the current Supreme Court, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. Um, Ginsburg was the leader of four liberal justices. Um, talk about what happens from now. We're less than two months away from a presidential election. Do you anticipate a huge fight? I, you know, I fully anticipate the Senate will appoint a new member of the U.S. Supreme Court. It goes against all um, historical precedents, but I just don't see the way Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has operated in the past, you know, not appointing Merrick Garland in the last year of President Obama's term, that he would miss this opportunity to appoint somebody else. So I fully expect someone to be there before the end of the year. Uh, Marco, let's talk just about the average person. I mean, I, I think it's it's hard for the average person, and I sometimes am confused by the label of conservative justice as opposed to liberal justice. If uh, the Republicans nominate and, and uh, appoint a new member of the court, it would be something like six to three uh, Republican mm -hmm. uh, appointees to Democratic. What does that actually mean from a functional standpoint uh, on rulings that the high court makes? Well, what happens is, and judges flip and flop. We've had uh, some 5-4, what you might argue was the liberal wing, very recently carrying cases that upset conservatives heavily. So judges do funny things sometimes, some do not. Some have behaved exactly as you expected from the moment they took. But right now, a 6-3 court is incredibly threatening to a progressive agenda. So hypothetically, should President Trump not be reelected, and there is a Senate, Demo a Senate that's Democratic, a House that's Democratic, and a Democrat in the White House and former Vice President Biden, they could be afraid that their laws would be ruled unconstitutional in a court that's 6-3 that might not otherwise do it, that it was 5-4 with somebody swapping back and forth between the two camps. Marco, back in history, um, were Supreme Court nominees, was it as political as it is today or has it gotten more political in recent, in recent times? You know, it's probably gotten more political, but the court is, is not even in the past what we thought it was. It had six members until the 1920s, and then they went to 10, realized that ties could happen, and went back to nine. But, it, you know, it, it wasn't as political, but I would never say it wasn't in some form a tug of war who goes on there. But in the recent time, it's become much more, I would agree. All right, Marco Lowe, thanks for your insight. Appreciate it.